Hi everyone, I'm Dan from Curious Animal. I've got another tutorial here for uh, grid plugins for Cinema 4D. This one's a bit more advanced, so if you haven't already, make sure that you go and check the basics tutorial as well. This tutorial is going to be in two parts. In the first part, we're going to build the layout for this calendar, and in the second part, we're going to do some simple animation on it. Okay, so we'll start with a new scene. I'm going to set the display mode to include lines to make it a bit easier to see what we're doing. And we'll start with a grid object. We'll make this a 7x7 seven seven grid by changing how many tiles are in each axis. And this gives us our starting point, which we can now modify. The first thing we want to do is add the header for our calendar and that's just all of these tiles in the top two rows joined together into one bigger tile and we can do that by adding the merge modifier. In the selection tab of merge we'll change selector to row and drag that up and that selected everything in the top two rows to be joined into one tile. Now we're going to uh, make this say July by adding set text. In the object tab here we'll Right, July, we'll change our font, and we'll select which tile we want this to be added to. Uh, because this time we want us to be able to see the tile itself underneath the word, we can go back to Object and click Keep Tile. While we're on Tiles, uh, if you go into the Generator object itself, you can choose how your tile is displayed. In this case, we're using planes, so that's the quickest to work with. You can also use rounded cubes where you can set a radius, a bevel radius for your tiles, or you can choose objects, uh, and this way you can use any object from your scene as a, as a tile. Now we'll start to set up the individual date uh, boxes. Uh, each of those is split up into two tiles. There's a there'll be a tile at the top which says the day of the week. And then there'll be another one down the bottom which has the, the number of the month. And, and to do that we'll use the split modifier. Oops. Add that there. Okay, uh, so this is split all of our tiles in two horizontally. We want to do it vertically instead, so we change it to Y subdivisions. We don't want to be using the top tile. So in the selector, we'll use index again, and this time we'll just invert this selection. That just swaps it. By default, split will uh, cut up all your tiles evenly, but in this case we want the day of the week to take up less space. So we go back to split and change the vertical bias. That way we can uh, change uh, where the split occurs in the original tile. Might give, might give the day of the week a little bit more space. Now we're ready to add the days of the week to our calendar. Let's just copy this set text down. In the selection tab of our new set text, we're going to change the index type to split. And this selects the first tile that was split off from any other tile. If we select index 1, you can see it's selecting the next tile along that was split off. Every time you split a tile, it remembers where it came from. So you can use these, uh, the split and the original index, as a, a way to reference those original tiles. Uh, so we'll take that back to zero. We don't want to select the first uh, tile, that's our header. So we can add a new selection. We're going to subtract this one. And we'll set this to index zero, so that's taken the July, the header out of our selection. Now we'll set the text to the uh, days of the week. And the set text object. Uh, cycles through all the lines of text in our text edit field to decide which text to put in each tile. You can see at the moment each uh, 
bit of text is a different size in the tiles, uh, which is a little bit ugly. If we scroll down here, we set the bounding box to match largest text object, and now all the sizes of our text will match. All right, now let's add the numbers in our calendar. We're going to use this text object again. This time in the selection, we'll simply take the split index up to the second one. Because the first of the month doesn't start on Sunday in July, we want to subtract a few more tiles from our selection. Uh, we'll, so we'll add another selector here set this to subtract and this time we're going to use the index range which lets us type in uh, different uh, groups of indices that we want to subtract we'll use the original index which is a bit easier it refers to the original tile that the split tile came from to figure out which indices you have to use you can go back to grid select a draw index, we'll set that to original which is the type of index we're after. Now we see we've drawn the indices in, in the tiles. So we know that we want to get rid of tile 14, 15 and 16. Also, we want to get rid of the last tile, which is tile 48. Great, so that's got everything we want selected, but they all say the days of the week now, which we don't want. We could type the numbers 1 through 31 as separate lines in our uh, text edit field, uh, but we've got a better way of dealing with lots of numerical values in grid which is to use uh, formula templates down in the advanced settings we can click enable templates then within double curly brackets we're going to use selection index and that's given us a number for each tile in the order they were selected. Sorry, while we're here, I'll turn off the draw index. But the month doesn't start from zero, so we add one to that. So this will execute any formula within the double brackets. You can combine it with normal text by adding that to the side but in this case we just want the number. Now it would be nice to control the spacing between uh, the tiles and their objects and we can do that using padding. If you go to the generator we have a padding option in here and you can see that we can increase the spacing between all our tiles. We can also uh, have a bit more control over which tiles were controlling the padding of using the padding modifier. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to select the uh, select July to start with. We can control the padding both of the tile itself so the tile has some space around it. Set that to point 1. You can also set the instance padding which is the space between the tile and whatever instance or text is contained within the tile. So that's spaced out our header. Now we'll invert our selection to control the rest of it. The instance padding is too big here. So we'll take this down, say 05 and because we want the uh, day of the week and the number of the month to act to, as a single unit visually. We can use group padding where we set this to selected by original index. 
and that sets the padding along any of their common edges to this value, to zero in this case, which is what we want. Maybe we want to have a bit less spacing in between the tiles. We'll take that down a bit as well. So that's the layout of our calendar set up. In the next part of this tutorial, we're going to use transform area uh, to help animate it. Thanks for watching this video. You can find out more about Grid and try out the demo at www.curiousanimal.tv.